Google Ads conversion value rules allow advertisers to adjust what a goal conversion might be worth to their account based upon a few conditions. Now, the main benefit of this feature will definitely be to check it out within your reporting, but also conversion value rules can affect certain optimizations for your bidding depending on which bid strategy you have selected. So in this video, we will show you where value rules live, we will show you what condition options you have, and there are certain nuances in how these value rules will work within your account. Then we will show you where they live within your campaign report segmentation, so you get an understanding of what you will be able to see when reviewing your rule adjustments. This might be a little bit too obvious, but right away, I do have to mention that if you are talking about conversion value rules, that means you must have a value associated with the conversions you have set up within Google Ads. If you're e-commerce and you already have e-commerce tracking set up, most likely you're fine. But for us, and most of our clients are lead gen, those numbers aren't automatically created for your goals. That is something that an advertiser in the lead gen space would have to enter themselves. So first to find this, you would wanna go to goals, head to your conversions, Yes, there's value rules, but let's look at summary first. So for this conversion, I'm gonna click into one. And within the details we heard from a client recently, the value of what a form lead is worth. And that helps us in a variety of ways, in terms of where we should be putting the budget, as well as giving us new options to test for bid strategies. If we go and edit the settings, here's where you can associate the value for a conversion. Now, when you're creating a new goal or importing one from GA4, you can add in a value right away. In this case, we had to come back and edit it once we got the number from the client. Again, e-commerce, it's gonna be easy if you're automatically importing those numbers. But from the B2B or lead gen side, you need to have some conversion value associated with these conversions in order to use conversion value rules. So once that's set, then you can head to value rules right under your conversion summary. I'm gonna highlight this section here because this is important to know but it does cover most campaign types within Google Ads. Conversion value rules are only applicable to performance max, search, shopping, and display. As of right now, no YouTube, app, or demand gen campaign types. Could change in the future, but I honestly don't know. So let's go ahead and create a conversion value rule. First, we will need to choose the condition. So go to your primary condition dropdown, and there we see the attribute options are device, location, and audience segment. So let's look into each of these. I'll go back up to device. You can select your devices or choose all devices. All devices does seem odd. To me, if you're seeing more value from a certain device, you would want to call that one out specifically. And go back up and change it. Then we can look at location. One example here is that the client does see more value in the state where they are headquartered. They just have more brand awareness. And the close rate for that state is much higher than any other state that we see convert within the Google Ads account. So I'd be able to look up that state and create a condition from that specific area. We did have one more option, and that was audience segment. This is gonna look very familiar from when you're adding audiences to any campaign or ad group. You can search from what Google offers, if I scroll down a little bit, or you can browse a list of your own remarketing audiences. So for the sake of this video, I'm just going to choose one. And as I finally select one, we see a preview off to the right. For a conversion value, if the audience segment is technology, then, and then we have to define what that is. But before we define the value adjustment, you can add secondary conditions. Let me use the location example I talked about. Let's add in location, and then let me select a state. And target that. Now look at the ad preview again. If the audience segment is technology and the user is located in Missouri, then we would define the rule. I cannot switch it to an or condition. It must include both of them. But I'm just creating this example for the sake of this demo. I'm gonna leave it as is, and then we can look at the value adjustment. So if these two conditions are met, then we can select our value operation. Do I want to add certain value to it or multiply? If you can toss in a hard dollar amount that the value increases if these conditions are met, add it down there. I know if people in this particular audience segment from Missouri convert, we usually lock down bigger deals from them, and it averages $1,000 more or maybe your scenario is different. You have different information. I know, yelling at me because I was adding first. Maybe if I know if people meet this particular audience segment, plus they're in this particular location, we typically lock down twice as more value than any other type of lead within the account. So I want to reflect those numbers within my reporting. So you can do that. Before I save, one more thing. There could potentially be a fourth option within this dropdown, and that would be no condition. 
no condition will only show up if you have store visits or store sales as a conversion goal. This is not an e-commerce account. They don't have brick and mortar stores, so we're not gonna have that option. Moving back up to the top, a couple of things. If I do decide to add more, let's just toss in this one, within the same condition, these two would act like an or statement. We see that reflected within the preview. It's only an and statement between the primary and secondary conditions. So within my primary condition, I don't have to have both of these conditions met. It's either technology affinity or business services in market. And we saw it earlier when I was setting this up. Since I selected audience segment in my primary condition, I cannot choose audience within the second condition. So I will go and save this just to show you something if I go and try to create another value rule. You may notice something right away. My primary condition is already picked and locked. If I go down to the second, it's already chosen for me and locked because as we look in this blue box, all of your value rules must have the same primary and secondary conditions. I can go ahead with a second rule and pick a different audience. And then I can go down and pick a different state. That's fine. I'll pick a different value and then I'll save this one. And there we have another rule created. Because these are active, I cannot go create a rule just on devices or just on location. It has to meet both of the conditions I have set up within my older rules. So that means I would have to go select these two, click edit, and then remove them from the system. Once I do that, I can go back and create another conversion value rule, and then I'm essentially starting over. So I'm gonna create a new rule really quick that actually applies to this account so I can show you how to view value rules in your reporting. Okay, I have one created. I know the location being the United States is very broad. Our conversion values were just set up in the actual goals not too long ago. And Google will not retroactively fill in conversion value before we actually set them up. So any legit rule that I would want to create for this account, I'm actually going to wait a little bit and adjust it as time goes on. I need more value information within this account first. However, when you do have a rule created, yes, you'll be able to see it in reporting. We're going to do that next. But these value rules can also be applied to value-based bid strategy optimization. The most popular one is going to be your target ROAS bidding. So now let's look at reporting. And to do this, you do have to head back to campaigns, click on the campaign dropdown, and we actually do want the campaign view. From here, go to segment, go on to conversions, and then you will see value rule adjustment. In our case, since things are so brand new, we're not seeing much applied yet. I barely have any value showing up in this account. So for the next part, I'm going to pull the example from Google Ads Help so you get a better understanding of what you might see. So this example from Google is a better breakdown of the segments you could see within your campaign reporting. So let's look at the example. You sell 50 bucks worth of books to customers in New York, 100 bucks worth of books to customers in California. But you have a value rule set up to multiply the value times two for buyers from New York. Within your segment, you would see the bulleted points below. There will be one segment for the value with the rule applied. Then you can see another option for the value with no rule applied. And then for this example in the third bulleted point, it's calling out the condition adjustment. Since this was a location condition, that will be called out in a separate segment. But depending on which one you set up within your account, it could be audience, it could be device, or as I mentioned with the store sales, it could also say no condition. Reporting for conversion value rules applies to all conversions, not just your ones in your main conversion column. That goes back to primary and secondary conversions. So this will give you more insights within your reporting and just make sure that you have the proper conversion column set up within your campaign level view reporting. We're starting to implement this more within our accounts that one, they don't have the capability to import offline conversion information back into the system, but we still want to try to optimize towards actual lifetime value. Of course, if you can get the exact dollar amounts from your CRM pushed back into Google ads, that'll still be a very valuable option that can give you more information, but not everyone has that capability. Or maybe your CRM doesn't have that capability to adjust by Google audiences, the device or the location. Setting these up, like we said, will also help optimize value-based bidding strategies. So it's another thing for you to experiment to see if setting any of these up help improve performance if you have clear winners on conditions you can set up that just flat out perform better. I didn't mention this earlier, but notice that all the conditions are for increasing value, not decreasing. No negative value adjustments with this feature. 
If you remove a conversion value, like I did earlier when I was setting up some examples, you will still get historical reporting, but any values reported from the moment you remove the rules will be back to their original values you have set up within the actual goal settings. If you have any other questions on value rules, we'd be happy to answer them, so please let us know in the comments. Thanks for watching our video. We really appreciate it. If you liked it, give us a thumbs up below. If you really liked it, maybe think about subscribing to the Paid Media Pros YouTube channel and you'll get alerted every time a new video drops. If you really, really liked it, you can help support the channel by checking out some of the t-shirts that we're wearing on our merch shelf, as well as looking at the Super Thanks button.